But joining us right now on the Map to Swiles Hotline is Logan Paulson, former Washington football team tight end. What's up, Logan? Hey, man. How are you? What's up, bro? Good morning, Logan. Buddy. So I've learned a uh, lot just... through Logan just doing the uh, pregame shows, but let me just tell you this. <laughs> Logan's a smart dude. Uh, I didn't go through his family resume, but I think he's got like a father-in-law that went to Harvard, and he could just rest on his laurels. Make you know, he made a good living in the NFL for a while. But he's a grinder. He grinds. It. <laughs> he's a smart guy. He's, he knows he's got a long. That. He's got a long runway after his NFL career. He can't Remember, just chill on what he made in the NFL. <laughs> he's got to work. We, we, we interviewed him when he first came in <laughs> in the league, and he was one of those eccentric guys that like didn't have a cell phone and all that, and uh, <laughs> just like a smart guy. We knew that. That's right. Yeah. 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 You, I'm sure you got one now, though, right? Yeah, I have to have one now, right? Yeah, Can't live without sure. it. So I have a million questions. I don't know. JP works with you every week, so he gets to pick your brain. Um, let's just first of all go to the big decision that was made uh, a few weeks ago, which was moving on from Dwayne. I have to imagine that off-the-field stuff was a big contributor, too. Um, but what what did you see from Dwayne? I mean, we could see the rankings. I think uh, Pro Football Reference had him with the most bad throws in the league. Um, his rating was awful. Uh, there was a lot of stuff there not to like, but it was only four games. What did you see? Yeah, I mean, I think I saw a lot of things that supported that. You know, I think I just saw a guy who wasn't very accurate and he wasn't very good with his fundamentals. And, you know, those things, I guess, over time could be resolved, but um, – you know, the other thing that I think kind of showed itself was just kind of a, some mental mistakes, some things that, you know, I'm not in the offensive installation. I don't know exactly what's going on, but things that seemed a little off at the time, you know, like he's kind of screwing up a protection call. He's reading the wrong side of the field on certain things. And those elements, those mistakes drive coaches nuts. You know what I mean? And, um, you know, I think that kind of supports some of that off the field mess that had come out in the last couple of weeks about him not preparing and studying the way he needed to, because ultimately, like, you know, I think, you know, being a first round draft pick, like he's going to have a long runway if he's doing the things the right way off the field. And, you know, like, exactly. I don't think his play was that terrible to, to warrant him being benched, you know, four or five games into the season. I thought maybe two or three more would be appropriate, yep. but if he's not doing the things right in the classroom, in the meeting room, staying late, getting there early kind of thing like that 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 decision makes way more sense to me yeah now is that something that you kind of blame the ohio state staff for not teaching him that or is that something he just became lazy at when he finally got the job Uh, because we heard that or do you chalk it up to not really being able to to practice during the off season because of covid um you know where, where does he learn those bad mechanics yeah, so I think that's a great question, and I, it's probably a myriad of things. You know, like I think a little bit of it, these college offenses, they don't challenge the player the same way that like an NFL offense does, for example. Like it's much more simplified. Uh, oftentimes, I don't know what his situation was with Urban Meyer, but the quarterbacks don't call plays until they get into the NFL. They've never been in a huddle until they get in the NFL. And those things, you know, to, to, to run an offense like that where it's being called from the sideline, it's incredibly simplified. And so – in an NFL offense, like, you know, you have cans and checks and things that need to be done at the line of scrimmage. You have cadence. You have different elements that some of these players have never been exposed to. So I think that's probably a piece of it for sure. Also, I think, like, you know, one of the biggest things in my experience in terms of dictating a player's success is how, how are they as a student, you know? And so, like, um, I know I don't know how he was in, in, in the classroom at Ohio State, but, like, usually the guys that I play with who are successful – are good at studying and they have a good way of learning different things. So I don't know if he ever kind of cultivated that skill set on his own. Um, And it can be really challenging to kind of like get to the show and have to learn that, how to learn how to learn, if that makes sense. I'm curious, though, are there guys, though, that are so athletically gifted that aren't necessarily good students, but it doesn't matter because they're gifted because maybe Haskins all of his life has been so – much better than everybody else that he didn't have to. Like, you played alongside Jordan Reed, who was a fantastic uh, tight end, right? Super talented. Yeah. Now, he, maybe he was a great person in the classroom. I don't know. No, yeah, I think, like, so that's the thing. It's like Jordan, Trent, Julio Jones, Matt Ryan, um, some of these guys, like Jay Cutler, these guys that I've played with, like, who kind of have maybe not like, you know, they're not like Rhodes Scholars, for example, in some of those cases, like, when you get them on the football field and you get them in the classroom in the football context, they're extremely bright guys. Like Trent had like 
you know, he didn't study a whole bunch, but he was the most intuitive football player I'd ever been around in my probably my whole career playing offensive line. So, that you know, it's people people say, oh, he's a freak athlete, you know, but ultimately they have to be a freak in terms of their intellect with regards to football. And I think that's one of the things that people often overrate. And it's why that pre-draft process is so important because it helps kind of show you what kind of guy you're dealing with from a mental standpoint. Like I've had conversations with coaches and they're like, man, we love what he puts on the field, but we don't trust that he can learn this offense that he can participate in this offense at a high uh, intellectual standpoint. You know what I mean? And so I don't know what the deal is with Dwayne, but like I think there was a little bit of that coming through not that he's not a bright guy, but I just don't think he was applying himself to the material the way that they wanted him to. Let me ask you, you about Scott this, Turner. Real, real quick, just to, for him to go in depth. You mentioned this during one of the pregames that you know from just looking at how a defense lines up that oftentimes a quarterback shouldn't be looking downfield or should should immediately go into a check down, and you weren't seeing that from Dwayne. Yeah, I mean, just like kind of the most basic concept, like you get a, a slant and a drag and then two slants to one side like that. The, the way you read that is dictated by coverage, right? So, like, versus single high, you read um, – kind of messed up now, but I think you read the, the slant and the drag, and versus cover two, you read the other side, right, the two slants. And so, like, you should know that based on pre, like pre-snap like pre read, based on the shell of the defense, which direction you're going. And that's a very simple example. It's kind of the most basic example. But even in the run game, let's say we've got a run to the right that's checked versus a free technique, right? You want to, you want to run it to the free technique, which is the, the defensive lineman that lines up over the guard, right? Um, if you don't know what a three technique is, how could you possibly run that run effectively the way the staff wants you to run it? And so some of those elements come through, and you see that, and you see kind of that on tape a little bit. And, you know, again, like I don't think like his play was – was poor enough, but those kind of mental mistakes and that lack of execution from a purely mental standpoint really can can mess up an offense. You know, and I got to see some of that firsthand when Robert was here. Like, that was one of the things that, you know, he didn't have to run like a really complex, complex offense at Baylor. And so he was kind of learning on the fly, you know. And when he kind of went to, like, full drop-back passer mode, like, that was a really tough transition for him in terms of reading the correct elements, you know. So with Scott Turner – um, you know, it's technically his first year calling plays uh, in the NFL anyway. Um, yep. And you played for with some really dynamic, brilliant offensive minds, the Shanahan's, the McVeigh's of the world. So it's, it's kind of hard and it's unfair to, to compare him to those guys because they've been doing it for so long. But are you content? Because we kind of talked about the, the game plan and uh, the, the lack of, I don't know, imagination, if you will. Sure. In the first few weeks. But it looked like in the Dallas game, he switched some things up. There was more motion. Um, that's that's just what I noticed. Now maybe that's because Kyle is, is in there and not Dwayne. But are you content with the the play calling and the designs and the schemes with the offense right now? I know it's a lot of new players yeah. too. Yeah, yeah. I think you know you got to kind of take everything in the context of this COVID nineteen season, right? So yeah. like what I, I was really disappointed, obviously, with the first couple weeks of the season. You know, it just didn't look very imaginative. It looked very stagnant. It looked very stale. It looked very safe. And, like, that, when you have the talent, offensive talent on this roster that they do, I don't think you can call a game that way. I think you need to kind of be pushing and challenging defenses with play design, with formations, with, you know, cadence, with, you know, different different kind of um, setups for plays and things like that. And so I was really disappointed with Scott Turner. But over the last two weeks since Kyle Allen's been in there, I've seen a kind of a maturation of the offense in terms of what they've been willing to call and, you know, kind of a better level of execution. And so I think it probably, you know, goes hand in hand with Kyle Allen starting. I think he probably knows Kyle, understands the offense a lot, but he feels much more comfortable giving Kyle more responsibility within the offense, calling different plays, calling different motions. Because, you know, one I had a coach tell me one time, it's like, we can't call motions because the quarterback can't get it from the headset to, to the players, to the huddle. You know, so if that's going on and like that's part of the preparation of the quarterback, right, is being able to kind of no formations, no different alignments, different setups pre-snap, get guys lined up. Because there's a couple of times I've seen Kyle Allen just kind of get guys in the right position. Oh, no, you're, you're on this side. Go move over there before, before, before the snap even starts, you know, and that's what you want from that play caller. I know he's not maybe the most dynamic guy of all time, but at least he's allowing them to run an offense at a high level. Logan, I see some things that I think. I think just people have overstated how horrific he is, right? Like, he obviously had a bad end of the season. Like, the second half of his season was awful. 
But the first half was yeah. pretty good and had some good games, which shows me potential, right? So clearly he throws some 50-50 balls. Um, he tries to make some throws into some tight windows that gets him into trouble. But he's got some sneaky athleticism. He can, you know, he can move around. He understands the offense. What do you think his ceiling is? Everyone, literally everyone has written him off as a backup quarterback. That's all he is at best. Do you think he could be uh, sort of a Ryan Fitzpatrick type, like someone that could, you know, quarterback your team for two, three years at a time? Yeah, I mean, I definitely think he has that type of uh, talent and that ability. And one of the things that – one of the, the, the simplest differentiating factors between a starter and a backup is just how consistent they are and how consistent their decision-making mm -hmm. is. And so one of the things that's – like, I think he has the talent. He's obviously got the mobility. Like you said, I think he's a smart guy, or at least that's right. kind of just watching the tape, what comes across. He's got some really live arm talent. But I think one of the things that's tough is, like, how consistent can he be, right? You get the, the New York Giants game where he throws – kind of a horrendous pick. He's not taking care of the football and the fumble. Yeah. This last week, he looks pretty good. He's coming along. And then what are we going to get next week? What are we going to get the week after that? And I think that right. inconsistency is what differentiates a starter from a backup, right? Because I've played with some backup quarterbacks who are immensely talented, right? But, you know, they just aren't consistent. They can't consistently make the correct decision, consistently make the big – Give us some examples of guys you played so, with. Um, so I think a great example is like Rex Grossman, right? Yeah. He's a guy who's very, very talented, smart guy, good leader. But for whatever reason, like when he got in the game, like, you know, like you felt like you had a chance to win, but you also felt like he might turn the football over trying to force the ball in someplace, you know? Mm -hmm. And I think that that, you know, like very talented, but the reason he wasn't a starter for a long period of time after Chicago was because of that kind of decision-making thing and like you know rex is a good buddy of mine and i think he probably agree with you to a certain extent with what i'm saying but um yeah so guys like that I, and i think you know i think that that's it's tough and the only way you get to see what that guy is is if he plays so we're gonna have a really good idea what kyle allen is and what he's capable of by the end of this this season i think right but if you had to put money on it they're going to be looking maybe maybe not starting a different quarterback in week one next year but certainly another guy will be on the roster, someone they either drafted high or signed. Yeah, I would think so. Unless Kyle Allen goes out here and, you know, plays like a starting quarterback. And I think, you know, what does that look like exactly? If he's throwing two touchdowns every week with no turnovers for the rest of the season, I think maybe you have a conversation about that, right? But mm -hmm. I don't think that's what you're going to get from him. I think they're going to be looking to upgrade. They're looking for a franchise quarterback. They're looking for a future. They're looking for someone to kind of build this team around moving forward. And I'm not saying Kyle, Kyle Allen is not that guy. I just – look at his body of work thus far and i would bet against that you know he might come out and be rejuvenated by being in a new city a new place and and do a great job but uh, and i hope he does i hope i hope he the does the number one thing is I limit would, the turnovers right that's his bu bugaboo yeah that is his bugaboo and it's decision making like you know i look at the the dallas game for example and he's playing great they're down in the red zone in the third quarter they're up and he kind of tries to force two passes into the end zone, right? Yeah, that and like, one in particular. A huge deal in that moment because they both fall, like they fall off the DB's hands or whatever happened. I don't remember exactly what happened. Right. But, you know, like those types of decisions, you need to get those out of your repertoire. Just totally get that out of there. Like you're scrambling to your left. You're, you know, like just throw that ball away. Live to play another down. Like don't give that team any momentum, you know? And I think those things, like even, even in a win, you kind of see some of that stuff happen. Mm -hmm. occasionally you know so i think that's something to, to keep an eye on moving forward even if he's not turning the ball over like like what are his turnover worthy plays looking like well also there was a time there where he was sacked and he almost fumbled you can see him like switching the ball from his left hand to his right hand or whatever and you're like well you're vulnerable there and that's kind of what happened the week before um yep. you know ball protection stuff even just being sacked talking to logan paulson yeah. who you can listen to on the fan pre right here on the fan um, so they lose Landon Collins for the year with the torn Achilles. What does that mean for the back end of the defense? So, you know, obviously, like, you never want to see someone get hurt, especially with a uh, an injury like what Landon had, um, you know, because that's just, like, the next year of his life is going to be just so different with the rehab and stuff. So, you know, yeah. thinking about him, hopefully that goes really smoothly. Um, the surgery goes well and stuff. But, I, you know, kind of the talking out both sides of my mouth i you know landon was not playing at a super high level when he got hurt and so in some ways i think that you know maybe giving some of these younger safeties an opportunity um, might be beneficial 
you know, curl, I think has looked good in some spot play and kind of some situational stuff. Like what does he do with that role? You know, Apke, um, we kind of saw what he was capable of. I think he's got tremendous potential, you know, good athlete, good size. You know, how does he, how does he fare out there with another young guy? You know, like, and just kind of see what you got there. I think Shazer Everett has played really well the last couple of weeks. He made a huge play in the Dallas game that, you know, led to a turnover by Holcomb and like the next play, you know, kind of breaking up a pass and the next play is an interception by Holcomb. So I think there's some talent there. I, you know, I like to see what they got. You know, there's a rumor that they're going to go sign uh, Eric Reed and he, he declined it or whatever. But um, I think they've got some good pieces there, and it's just about kind of seeing what you got at, at, that, at that position group at this moment. Logan, good stuff, man. Really you get good to stuff. enjoy the week off, the bye yeah, week. Nice. So enjoy Absolutely. it. Thanks, man. Thanks yeah. for having me on, guys. Yep. Yeah, thank right, you, bro. buddy. Let's do it again soon.